few modest comparison between my previous 17 F350 versus the 19 F250 fuel mileage observations. So the thing to remember about the 17 F350, one, it's a heavier truck, but two, it had 3.73 gears. The F250 had uh, 3.55 gears. So I think the 355 gears made a huge difference in terms of fuel mileage. Now I was, you can see here, I observed regen differently with the 17 than I did with the 19. With the 17, I was, I was monitoring when regen starts, when regen completed, how many total miles it took to do a full active regen. These are all active regens, by the way. And as you can see here, that's a lot of active regens. I had a couple OCR regens because uh, I was doing a lot of city driving. Um, so you can see here, you know, active regions, total time, you know, I mean, but this was a lot to monitor. So eventually I got tired of monitoring it somewhere in May. And I was like, you know what, just forget it. Like, that's a lot to monitor all the time. With the 19 F250, I would just monitor when it would go into region, active region. Um, I didn't concentrate on what at what mileage it started and what mileage it completed and total mileage. And then right here, miles between last region. Uh, you know, how many miles between, you know, active regions. Uh, that, that's just a lot to monitor. But anyways, you can see here the F250, uh, sorry, the F350, my 17 F350, you can look at the fuel mileage is just horrendous. Horrendous. As a matter of fact, uh, I was not able the first, I don't know, five, four months-ish, nothing over 20 miles of the gallon. I would barely get 18. But the truck was cut. You can see a lot more mid-range, so 15 to 17 miles of the gallon, 18 maybe, and a whole lot of active regions. My God, Ford, they do not know how to build emission systems. They don't know how to build an emission systems that can conduct passive regen. They need to put that diesel particulate filter up front, not in the back. Now, they do with the chassis cams. But why don't they do that with the pickup models? You do that, the truck will remain in passive regen because the exhaust gas, the exhaust gases would get hot enough. And plus, the Fords, they're just, they're just dirty motors. They inject a lot of fuel. They, they're just dirty. Anyways, that's just rant. Because Fords, are, they're good-looking trucks. Don't get me wrong. On the outside, the exterior of the trucks, they're good-looking trucks. Uh, the interior could be... Uh, I mean, they're, they are way behind in the interior factor compared to Ram, and so is GM, way, way behind. But they're good-looking trucks on the outside. The engines are powerful. Transmission is smooth. Problem is, the emissions suck. Ford's emission systems are just awful. And this, the mileage report here, reflects that. It reflects how awful the regen emission system process is because they're constantly in active regen. Look at that. It's like almost every week, every fill up, active region, active region, active region. Now, the 19 was, a, you see here, actually, the 19 is a little bit better. It, it, it is better. You know, you don't have as many active regions, but still, you have active regions. Um, the F-250 did get better fuel mileage. You know, I can get up to, you know, over 18 on a consistent basis, you know, 20, over 20, you know, as well. But... The F-350, you couldn't. Now, I don't know if that is because the 17 F-350 had 3.73 gears and the F-250 had 3.55 gears. That, I believe, makes a difference. It, 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 I'm sure it contributed to the overall factor that the, F, the 19 F-250 got better fuel mileage. Um, and plus, the truck's a little bit lighter, too, I, I think. But anyway, so this is just a comparison between the two. The F-350 versus the F-250, and huge MPG discrepancies here, like huge. Um, I mean, look at some of these regen processes, these, these OCRs too. Gosh, this just awful. Awful, the amount of regens that the that these trucks, the Fords go into. As you see in my previous video with the Ram, dude, they're, Cummins, their emission systems are packed. I, I can't stress that enough. Down, packed. But anyways, so 
Look, you can get a good, you, you can still drive a heavy duty truck and get decent fuel mileage. You know, you can do that in the Ram. You can't do that in a Ford because they don't know how to build emission systems. And they don't know how to regulate their regen process either. So, but, you know, if you want to, if you want to drive a heavy duty truck and get good fuel mileage, I know some people will be like, well, you don't buy these trucks because of blah, 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 blah. Look, look. It's like, it's like Mr. Truck from TFL Truck. Bless his heart. But, you know, when he makes complaints like, oh, you need to lower these trucks because of blah, 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 or like whatever. Like some of the stuff he says is just irritating. It's just the best way I'm going to put it. How things were 20 years ago is not how things are today. It's like I tell people in the military. What you did 20, 30 years ago does not apply today. How soldiers were like then does not apply to how soldiers are today. You got different generations of kids coming into the military, right? Same thing with trucks. I get that trucks back in the day were strictly for work and whatever, but look, look at the trucks today. They're not just made for work. They're made for, it's like a, it's like a office, right? You want to be comfortable in your truck. I spent a lot of time in my vehicle. I want to be comfortable. But anyways, I'm getting off the point. The point is, the uh, few mileage discrepancies between the F3 and F250. And this is what I wanted to outline. So F250 did better, but still, you got active regens. And either way, fuel mileage is just awful. 